Welcome to Trinity Anglican Church, St. John, New Brunswick. We're pleased that you are with us today as we celebrate Trinity Sunday. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Our opening hymn today is hymn number one, Holy, Holy, Holy. love and he that abideth in love abideth in God and God in him seek ye the Lord while he may be found call ye upon him while he is near let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon dearly beloved brethren the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that all we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and a humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. And please join me, almighty and most merciful Father. We, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have fallen too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. 
and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent. According to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus you are Lord. And grant, O merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, have given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people the impenitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and infinitely believe his holy gospel. Wherefore we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together the prayer that the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be. Lord, God, and Amen. Praise ye the Lord. reading from Genesis chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. 
And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the water, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning on the third day. And God said, There be light in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. To rule over the day and over the night. And to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning on the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creepy things, wild animals of the earth of every kind, and it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. And then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning on the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, 
and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our point of psalm for today is psalm number 8. O Lord, our governor, how excellent is thy name in all the world. Thou hast set glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of very babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest kill the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, even the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou hast made him but little lower than the angels, and dost crown him with the glory of worship. Thou makest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, and thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, the beasts of the field the birds of the air, and the fishes of the sea, and whatsoever moveth through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our governor, how excellent is thy name in all the world. The second lesson is taken from Paul's letter to Corinthians, starting at the 13th chapter, the 11th verse. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Trinity Gradual. Blessed art thou, O Lord, who beholdest the great deep, and sittest upon the cherubim. Blessed art thou, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven, and in our mouth to be praised and glorified forever. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Blessed art thou, O Lord, of our fathers, and praised to be praised forevermore. Hallelujah! Holy Gospel is taken from the Gospel of St. Matthew's 28th chapter, beginning at the 16th verse. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came to, and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go for, therefore, and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We join together in hymn 436. Have mercy on us, God most high.
We join together as we reaffirm our faith as we repeat the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last man. meditation of all our hearts be totally acceptable to you, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, the question I would have for us today is, how do we answer Jesus' Great Commission instruction for us today? This Sunday, the Church honors the presence of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The prescribed scripture for us on this Sunday is Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20, which are the last writings of the Gospel writer for Matthew. We don't really get a text that particularly expounds on the Trinity, but rather we have Jesus' words as we exit Matthew, which are intended for one purpose and one purpose only. And that is to draw us in to the great conversation. And I say great conversation as a parallel to the title of these few verses, which are commonly referred to as the Great Commission. On Trinity, I offer the following, in that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are in complete relationship in perfect love in the one God himself. God's creation. We read the creation story in Genesis. He created you and I, and he made us in his image. And we were given dominion over all that he created. We are recipients of his love, and nothing by our own doing have we earned this but by his grace. And our payment to him for this wonderful gift is to continue to stay in relationship with him and to love one another. God became incarnate through the Son who lived as you and I and spent his life teaching and setting the example for us right up to including his full act of obedience on the cross where he paid for our sins. Jesus appears before the eleven on the mountain in Galilee where he promised them, saying, Surely I am with you to the very end of age. This is the promise of the third person of the Trinity, a promise held secure forever by the whole of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That we will never, ever be alone as long as we shall live. On that Galilean mountain that day, Jesus drew in his chosen eleven into a very private conversation, which I would like to refer to as a great converse, conversation, not to diminish the messaging of the Great Commission. Matthew commences his last chapter with the resurrection of the Lord and the appearance of the resurrected Lord to the two women. And he completes his writing in the last chapter of his Gospel with another appearance, and that being with his chosen eleven. Jesus speaks with using the word all 
several times in his instructions. He says, all authority in heaven and earth. By this, he's providing a foundation to which the chosen eleven will go out and carry the task that Jesus has placed on their shoulders. He says, all nations. He says, they're going for and make disciples of all nations. Jesus is providing them, through these words, the scope of their work. Then he says, all things. He instructs them that those that they will meet will have their hearts open to hear his word. And then he says, always. I am with you always to the very end of age. He affirms his presence forever. And they should be as confident in the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, as they were with Jesus himself over the last three and a half years. Through this great conversation, he drew them in, as these words should draw us in, if not only to reflect on what Jesus called us to through our baptism, all made by the grace of God through the Trinity. Our question should be, what are we as a church? or as an individual follower of Christ, doing with this instruction. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So how are we doing with the mission of the church? As a church and as an individual. I cannot think about the mission of the church without reflecting back to 1984 when the Anglican Church adopted the five marks of mission. This was to be our foundation going forward from 1984 onward. And the five marks of mission are as valid today as they were when they were adopted back by the Anglican Communion. We confess our faith of our baptism when we state in the Nicene Creed, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. While we truly live in a time where we need to believe and we need to be confident in our faith and willing to share this good news to those that we meet. We live in a country where there's much freedom envious of many countries that could only dream of having what we have. Although we're presently confined somewhat through the COVID-19 crisis, and we're further stressed south of us with what's going on in the racial divide of God's children, the injustice that has raised its head to an ultimate peak through the death of George Floyd. We need to take these marks of mission to our very core. If we did, the world would be a better place. But when we start to talk about mission and we start to talk about evangelism, we glaze over sometimes because we think mission is someone that's going to go off to a war-torn country and give unselfishly possibly their life. And when we think of evangelism, we often think of someone standing at the top of King Street with the Bible in one hand and preaching with the other arm stretched out. These are accurate definitions of both, but they're not total definition. It's only a part. The Anglican Church, through its marks of mission, finds ways for each of us to participate in God's overall plan. Let's have a look a little. 
By Jesus' commission, he invited his chosen, he invites you and I to join him and be active in his agenda. The five marks of mission are to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God, to teach and baptize and nurture new believers, to respond to the human need of loving service, to seek to transform the unjust structures of society, and to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation, and sustain and renew the life of the earth. And to these five, Bishop Sue Moxley added a sixth a few years back, and that's to strive for peace, conflict, transformation, and reconciliation. You see, these five marks of mission provide us the framework for our work as a church and as an individual. And if only we could look through the lens of these five or six marks of mission when we see what's going on in the world and take appropriate action, how much better the world would be. We say lives do matter, all lives. Jesus commissioned his eleven to go to all nations. He commissioned them to go to all races, to all people in the ends of the earth. Yet we have so many people that feel unloved. And we have so much bitterness and hatred that resides in our backyard. Jesus didn't say just go out. He says teach and baptize and care for all of God's creation with compassion and justice. Whatever we do as a Christian, we do with the gospel as our core. The good news for us has been made possible through the cross and the resurrection of his only son. You and I are called to stay in relationship with him as a Christian. And during these days, many of us may find that difficult when so many lives are lost in our communities and what's going on with our country around us. Our hearts do go out to those who have lost loved ones through the coronavirus over these past months, and lives are still being lost. Each life is significant. Our hearts go to our neighbors in Nova Scotia who have suffered so greatly through the COVID-19 crisis and with the senseless act of violence and those lives lost who put their careers in line to save our freedom. We are called today to witness not only on a Sunday morning, not only for an hour, but every day all week long, all year long, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That is what it means to be a Christian. And we take this charge because we submit to Jesus as our Lord. Sharing God's news can be standing on the street corner with the Bible, but more importantly, it is our presence in others' lives, where they see God's love shining through every act that we do. For certain, we speak much louder through our actions than we ever will through our words. We have a duty to serve society, show compassion, and uphold justice to all. Jesus calls us the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men you can see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. This is all about our actions. We are called to care for God's creation. Jesus says, all authority in heaven and earth. This is a Jewish way of talking about creation. We read in Genesis, God created the heaven and the earth. The first book first chapter of the Bible. And as we close the Bible, looking at the book of Revelations, we're given insight into the new heaven and the new earth. 
it comes full circle. Jesus is Lord of all creation. And God sustains that for you and I. So where does this leave us? So what? Well, God's whole mission is God's whole church. This is not a job assignment for a chosen few, for our bishop or for a minister or for two or three. There's a role to play for each and every one of us. But we ask, how can I? I'm just one person. How can I make a difference? There's a lovely little story about a little girl on a beach after a hurricane and all the starfish were scattered along the beach and she's picking up each one gently and putting it back in the water a gentleman was walking down the beach he said what are you doing she said i'm putting the starfish back in the water he said the beach is littered with thousands of starfish do you think you are making a difference and she says for this one i am that's how important it is for each and every one of us to stand tall. The whole church's mission includes every church member. We've all been given different gifts. And through this COVID virus, I've seen so many gifts come forward when people have been asked or volunteered to help people not be feeling so isolated through phone calls, through messages, what have you. And I'm truly of the mindset that when my time is over on earth, I think the conversation that will probably happen with God and myself will be something like, so what have you done with the gifts I gave you? How are we prepared to answer that question? Every member's mission includes the whole life. When we talk whole life, we're not talking about checking Christianity at the door as we walk into the church. We are God's hands, ears, eyes, feet. He expects us, he counts on us to continue to grow his church. When we think of missionaries, we need to look in the mirror it's first and foremost, we are the missionary that God is looking for. In the Book of Common Prayer in the Holy Communion, we pray, let us pray for the missionaries at home and abroad. That's us. We're the missionaries at home. Let us try to be the motive force in continuing Jesus' great commission by entering into that great conversation. Amen. We join together with him 369. Break the vision that delight.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. O Lord, save the Queen. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do the ministers with righteousness. And make thy children people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thy inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And evermore might they defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And save us thy Holy Spirit from us. The Colic for Trinity. Father, we praise you through your word and Holy Spirit, you created all things. You reveal your salvation in all the world by sending to us, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Through your Holy Spirit, you give us a share in your life and love. Fill us with the vision of your glory, that we may always serve and praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, we know when you, when two or three are gathered together, you hear our requests. In these ever-changing days of uncertainty, as we, our loved ones, friends, neighbors, and countless tens of thousands, we will never know, are touched in one way or another with this COVID-19 virus, that you will hold us firmly in your loving care. We ask you to be with those affected by the virus in Campbellton these past weeks. Strengthen those affected so they might ward off the virus. Be with their families as they journey alongside. And be with the community that they begin to heal from any anxieties they currently have. That all are restored to full health and continue to live life to its fullest. Almighty God, give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Amen. A prayer for people at, of higher, at higher risk, those on the medical front lines and caregivers. Dear Lord, we lift up to you our concern for people who are more likely than others to become severely ill from the COVID-19. The elderly, people with chronic health conditions, the medical frontline workers and caregivers, protect them from harm and be their comfort in this time of uncertainty. For many, preventative isolation from loved ones. Pray for the leaders to make responsible decisions on our behalf. Father, we seek your wisdom daily. Be with people making decisions. Our Queen, Queen Elizabeth, our Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, and our Premier Blaine Higgs. Provide them with your guiding hand in order their decisions will be positively affect the lives and futures of our families, communities, and countries and the wider world. And we pray that they communicate clearly, truthfully, and calmly with each other and with the public, and that their message is are received and heeded. May truth and empathy be the touchstones of people setting policies for our protection. Amen. And we pray for families adjusting to new ways of life. Dear Lord, as we in this province and in our country begin to relax our isolation regulations, be ever mindful of the role each and every one of us plays in maintaining a healthy community. We pray for our church. Dear Lord, continue to provide our church leaders with the wisdom to lead your church through this pandemic and bring us through with a stronger relationship with you. The Most Reverend Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury, the Most Reverend Linda Nichols, Archbishop, Right Reverend David Edwards, Bishop of the Diocese of Fredericton, all priests and deacons. 
May they at this time be inspired to reach out in new ways to continue to strengthen the community of your family. By this, your faithful remain calm and connected, continuing their one-on-one -on -one relationship with you. And together we say the general thanksgiving, Almighty God, Father of our own Jesus, we thy worthy servant, we give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that new sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord, to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise when two or three are gathered together, in thy name thou wilt grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 184, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.